Uh, well, I don't have my license and registration, so come on in. I'm not a cop. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> All right, come on in, sucker. Uh, sir, you don't have door handles. Uh, here we go. You expect a passenger to do this? What's your plan to fix that? I've got a guy named Logan that can fix that. If I was a police right. officer, yeah. you'd be arrested. Oh, um, for stealing somebody's car. What is this, some kind of hot rod? It is. Okay, so this is a 49 Olds, uh, belongs to Scott Moyers. This is my favorite car of, in the shop currently. Uh, it's been here a little while. It was probably the most, like the roughest car when it came in. The entire bottom end was rotted out. Uh, it's gotten a lot of work done. It's been channeled. Yeah, it's a fun project. So in this video, I show you how I just plop in that, do a bunch of things right there. And I'm gonna teach you how to install a shifter. This one oh, right yeah, here. Yeah, look at that. A little shifty business. Yeah, so Gary's gonna get to it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. This is what I'm working on right now. It's 49 Olds. So I'm gonna be making all of this work. Just started mounting this steering column, this little guy. It's the little guy. I gotta mount that, a brake pedal assembly, and the seats, and just make it all work. So I remade the bottom of the dash, this section right here, and I'll show you why. So here's what I did. It all fits flush in there. Got this little plate right here to hold the bottom of the steering column. And this right here just to stiffen it up. So I've got a stud going through the top there. That holds this. Got this on my steering wheel so I ain't gonna go nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. And there it is. Wow. Next I'll uh, Put a couple of universal joints on that steering shaft, run it through the fire roll, run it to the uh, steering rack. That's what we want. All right. All right, so I had to take the column back out so I can make uh, some steering go through there. What are we doing here? Huh? Yeah, so I cut it out with that right there. And that isn't gonna sit flat. So you know what? Old Logie there down there. He's gonna help me out because it's hammer time. All right, ready? Yeah. All right, we got our little dealie going through the firewall down there at the tow board. Now we're getting somewhat of an idea of the brake pedal and assembly. Will you just look at that? Looks like a million bucks. Does anybody know what this is? This is a Tesla master cylinder and electric booster. And uh, supposedly it stops awesome. And that's what we're after. It's awesome, it's new, we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna incorporate that to that. It's gonna take some doing, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got the uh, Tesla master cylinder and booster just mocked up. Take a little gander. Let's take a tour on the top side. So I'm gonna end up moving it up and over just a little bit, and then I'll end up bending this pedal to get it back over. Uh, it'll be chopped a little bit because it's way too long right now. The ratio is too much. All right, so I'm finally getting around to uh, mounting the seats. And for starters, this is a full custom floor pan. The floor was so rusted that we had to remake everything. We couldn't even sandblast it. We had to remake everything on the bottom of this car. So that's why it uh, looks like it is. All that being said, mounting the seat, there's nothing square to go off of. What I did was I ran a plumb bob off the center line, the steering wheel, just to make sure that the seat is in line with the steering wheel. I'm kind of going from there. I'm setting it up about three quarters back in the sliders where it will be, because I'm kind of taller. And uh, I just marked the center line of the seat, center line of that, put it there, made a couple of measurements. Now I'm gonna make it happen. Okie dokie, now I've got this set up for a short guy or a tall guy. That should work. Oh, look what we got here. The old Timmy two seats. Okay, so I got the passenger seat set in place, about to drill holes and mount it. I got this bar over here, this bath, to straighten it up. I checked to make sure that the angles are correct for both of them, because it can be off and still look kind of right, but uh, we'll go from there. 
All right, kiddos, it's Logan here. Might have started with Gary, but I'm gonna finish it. Not really, I'm not gonna try to be a hero. I'm just doing a shifter, nothing crazy. But I'm gonna show you how to install this here low car floor style button head shifter. And where we start is not in the car at all. Where we start is right here. This is our shifter pedestal and it's actually unassembled. So we're gonna go through all our little bits and pieces here and assemble our low car shifter pedestal. We got some directions, maybe we'll go grab those. All right, got our plate on. Now it does allow for some adjustability on the actual plate itself, but we're gonna lock it down in the middle right there just so we can get a nice little beginning look. All right, we're in the car now. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna actually set up to drill our holes on this little shifter. We've got it set up and it looks pretty centered. Looks can be deceiving. So we're gonna check it with the old measuring tape. All right, I know I am right at three and a half inches on either side of my shifter right now. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is mark all my holes with a Sharpie. Gotta find my Sharpie. All right, find the center of each hole with my Sharpie. Whoa, got a little crazy there. All right, now I got all my holes marked with Sharpie. I'm gonna take the shifter out, I'm gonna drill some holes. Now we got a drill bit. Actually, I got a little excited though. We can't, we cannot be starting with a bit that big. We're gonna give ourselves a pilot hole with a smaller bit that'll give us a lot more control so we can make a more accurate hole. All right, pilot hole, here we go. Blow the metal shavings out for the mice. All right, now for the moment of truth. I never get this right. All right, so far, those are all spot on. But the real test is the rivet nuts. All right, friends, here we go. Rivet nut number one. You really wanna insert these things as straight on as possible. It's gonna pull the nut a little cockeyed if you're not straight on. Felt our bottom out. Now we're gonna take our tool away. And just like that, we have a quarter 20 insert with plenty of meat on it, plenty of threads for a bolt to grab. I'm gonna knock out our other four holes and then we should be able to bolt the sucker right down. All right, there she is, all lined up with our rib nuts, looking good. Next up, I'm gonna mark the full travel of this here arm so I know where to cut my slot for this cable. All right, folks, here's where we're at. Look down through there, looking good. We got a full range of motion on that sucker. Now, we're gonna go ahead and take you underneath to show you how we're gonna hook up this whole cable to our transmission. Here we are, underneath the Oldsmobile. There's our little doodad sticking through. Now, we gotta do the old installation maneuver. It's a pretty easy maneuver just like that. The next step is to actually mount our bracket that's gonna hold our cable, just like this. We gotta hold our cable right here. I'm gonna get that bracket taken care of and then I'll be right back. All right, so this piece of our cable is where we wanna mount it because this little indentation is meant for a bolt. It's gonna go around that collar and once that bolts through there, this cable actually won't be able to move at all. All right, now next we're gonna mark our holes and then we'll go grab some friends to TIG weld us a nut on the back of here. We're back under the Oldsmobile and I've made a ton of progress on this shifter. I wanna show you exactly what's going on here with this cable, why I routed it, where I routed it, how I routed it, and how you can make sure that everything is doing just as it should. Mounted our cable retainer. Now we're running our cable in this loop. I tied it along our chassis, keeping it out of the way of the drive shaft that'll run down here. And she's mounted onto our transmission. This is your bracket that low car supplied. These jam nuts lets you position your cable forward and backwards, as well as these slots. So you can make sure that when your shifter's in park, there is no slack between this heim joint and this lever. Up top, of course, is our shifter, our two bolts for that cable retainer. And we're gonna run it through the gears. We, we know she's working because on the shifter, we can feel first second, third, or drive, overdrive, which is really your main drive, neutral, pop turn to neutral, 
reverse park. I don't know where we're at in this video. Probably back to Gary. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, putting in the fuse panel, mocking it up so everything is in place. Got these little pieces of metal, little sheet metal tabs, and gonna weld them in place up and out of the way. I'll show you in a sec. Before we had AC in the south, everybody had fans, especially in church, where they'd be like, oh Lord, you know, get the wind going at you. All right, so I got my little plate and my little stick. And it's gonna mount up underneath the dash like that. Hide the fuse panel. I think I'm gonna throw a little bit of paint on this and be good to go. Okay, I got the fuse panel mounted on here. Got some paint on her. Got some weight on it. It does not create the desired effect of a fan anymore. Oh Lord. So, I'm gonna weld it back in place under the dash. And that'll be its home. All right, so got the fuse panel, got the Dakota Digital module in place. And when you just look at that, just look at all of that. You know, you're right here. And you're like, where's the wiring? Oh, it's right here. You can get to it. It's hidden. Voila. All right, folks, uh, thanks for watching the video. Had a lot of great times, memories, and all that jazz. Next time you see this, it'll be uh, an episode on the dash, the custom dash. It's gonna look a whole lot better than that very soon. We got an open house to set up, so we gotta get going. Good guys, open house, May 12th. That's today. If you're watching this video, it's too late. Hope you're there. <laughs>